Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Monday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and after the All-Star break, the Mets have picked up a whole game. Yes, they started the break at 10 under, now they are 9 under. A 5 and 4 road trip was completed yesterday as the Mets dropped 3 of 4 to the San Francisco Giants. Um, Mets outscored the Giants in the series 15 to 11. Of course, most of those runs scored by the Mets were in uh, their lone victory uh, of the series, but uh, it was a tough series. It was a tough series. The Mets bullpen pitched extremely well. The Mets starters pitched extremely well. And um, the offense was MIA. So, you know, I, going against what I hoped and thought that uh, once the bullpen figured itself out, the offense would still do what it did to support it. Well, I guess I was wrong, at least. I was wrong this past weekend. So I want to talk about the weekend set. Uh, I want to talk about a rumor about, um, or Mets Twitter rumor about my Matt Harvey and uh, preview the week to come on today's show. If, uh, if you had said that the Mets had Noah Syndergaard, Jacob deGrom, Walker Lockett, and Steven Matz pitching, and the Mets were only going to win one of those games, do you think anyone would guess it would be the Walker Lockett game? Well, Mets fans know better, right? We know that that's the sort of game that the Mets win, and that when Jacob DeGrom starts, the Mets don't win. In fact, there was a stat the other day that I saw on Twitter. Uh, it, it, Jacob DeGrom has, over his last 52 starts, a 2.18 ERA, and the Mets have 15 wins in those games. I think it was that the Mets have the 15 wins or that he has 15 wins. Either way, with an, an earned run average that low... Uh, <laughs> In that many starts, dude, he, the, <laughs> both he and the team should have more wins. That's just craziness. But it is what it is for Jake. It just it, it never seems to change for him. So, um, starting pitching was good this past weekend. I mean, what can you say? Um, Mats was good yesterday. Um, Syndergaard was good on Thursday. Um, Degrom was fantastic on Friday. Walker Lockett pitched well on Saturday. Uh, the bullpen was for the most part very good throughout this series not once did the bullpen uh come in the, to the to the game and throw gasoline on the fire um they 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 seemed to uh get themselves in, in order a little bit so all that needed to happen then was for the offense to continue doing what it had been doing pretty much the whole first half and that was to you know score some runs <laughs> of course that didn't happen so uh, Pete Alonso had a little bit of a uh, hit a little bit of a skid. He's been struggling of late. Uh, Jeff McNeil had a rare O for yesterday, an O for five actually, which is is very strange to see from McNeil. Um, uh, you know, JD Davis can use to be a nice surprise, as does Dom Smith, who uh, you can point at as the culprit for Friday night's loss uh, with uh, with him misplaying the fly ball that. Ahmed Rosario probably shouldn't have been as deep and as in his face as he was. Um, but, you know, Dom Smith is not a left fielder. And that's that's the bottom line with a lot of this stuff, you know. The, the defense being as poor as it is has as much to do with the fact that defense isn't a number one priority for this team and really hasn't been in years. Uh, it has as much to do with that as it does with the fact that half of these guys are playing out of position, like, all the time. Every time the Mets take the field, there's at least one guy playing somewhere they shouldn't be playing. Uh, and usually there's two, and Conforto's in center and McNeil's in right. So, you know, there, there's there's no getting around the fact that, that these losses are piling up because this is just... <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's not a good team. And I, I was fooled... I was fooled into thinking that they could make a run in the second half. I really was. But, you know, the sign of a good team is that you can't get all three of those things clicking at the same time. I've said it a number of times earlier this year uh, about the, uh, you know, the offense, the starting pitching, and the bullpen being all on the same page where you're scoring runs and your starters are locking things down, pitching great for six innings, and then the bullpen comes in and gives the whole game away. Yeah. Now this weekend the bullpen finally has its shit together and there's no offense to speak of. I mean, it's a trademark of a, of, of a mediocre or bad team. And I just, you know, I guess I just have to accept that. It sucks, but I had to accept it. Um, 
That being said, I'm still going to watch every game. Um, I'm still going to be rooting for this team to make the playoffs this year. It's still not mathematically impossible. So anything can happen, right? And when it does, I'll be the one that said it's going to happen. So uh, that that's it for the weekend set. I don't really have much else to say um, about the about the games. It just they they were what they were. Um, again, three losses in this series, all extra innings losses, and all three of them could easily have been wins. And you know that's that's a that's the difference of a of a hugely successful road trip and a five and four road trip, which is not terrible. You know, really a five and four road trip, not bad, if you're not ten games under five hundred coming into it. You know? So, um, you yeah, know, it is what it is. So let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, over the weekend, the uh, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, uh, I think that's what they're called now. I'm not 100% certain. But um, they designated for assignment uh, Matt Harvey. They released him from his contract. And it looks as though um, I don't think he'll accept a AAA excuse me, assignment. Yeah, so it looks as though Harvey is going to be available. And Mets Twitter is Mets Twittering, and a lot of it is suggesting that the Mets take a flyer on him and bring him back. I, uh, I'm wearing, today I'm wearing a Matt Harvey jersey. Um, I'm, and I have a rule about jerseys that I'll mention in a second, but I, I'm as big a Matt Harvey fan as anybody you'll find. I, uh, I must have five or six pictures of him in my office. Um, I, I, I just really gravitated toward Matt Harvey. I loved his I loved his um, mojo on the mound. I loved his fierce com- uh, competitive nature. Um, I, I, I really felt like dude, we had a guy, you know, this was our going to be our guy. We had a guy who was going to be here for, be a bulldog for 10 years. You know, that was, that was, that was Matt Harvey to me. I loved, I loved Matt Harvey. Um, I have my rule about jerseys, by the way, is that once a player is no longer on the Mets, as long as they're still playing baseball, I won't wear their jersey. Um, Matt Harvey's the only exception I've ever made to that rule. Um, I, I won't wear my Murph jersey. I will not wear my Bartolo Colon jersey, um, and a number of others that I just won't wear because they're 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 not on the Mets. And I guess technically I could probably put the Bart one back into circulation now because I don't think he plays for anybody. But um, no matter the the point of all of this is. Um, as much as I love Matt Harvey, and as much as I believe that Matt Harvey's struggles are 100% physical and related to his inability to come back properly from the surgeries that he uh, had, uh, the surgeries that he had, by the way, because he pitched his heart out in 2015, went against doctor's orders, and it, he, he's paid for it. He's paid for it. There's no getting around it. All that being said, I do not want him anywhere near the Mets. Right? He is not going to be an asset to this team in any capacity. Uh, it's not as though a whole number of years have passed um, since the whole messy breakup um, from from last year. Uh, it was <laughs> it, it it just happened. Okay, so um, there's there, there's there, there's not even like a sense of nostalgia that you can say, oh, we'll bring Harvey back. You know, like when the Mets brought Tom Seaver back in '86. Um, there's nothing there, right? There's, he's not a good fit. He doesn't fit anywhere on the team. Um, he has proven that he cannot start anymore. Um, he's also shown that he's not matured that much yet because he still won't accept an assignment to AAA. And, and I'm assuming that. I shouldn't say that. I don't know if the Angels even made that offer to him, but I suspect he still would be um, anti-AAA demotion. <laughs> Which, look, if you're an older pitcher, and he, not, not that he's old, but if you're a pitcher who's been around for a while, and Harvey's been in the league for six years now, this is his seventh, seventh season, I think? 13 was his first? Or was 12 his first? And then, no, 2012 he came up. So he came up in the middle of 2012, regardless. Um, if he really wants to extend his career, and that's what I'm getting at here, whether he's a, a six, been in the league for six weeks or he's been in the air for six years, 
Um, he, if he wants to extend his career, he has to be willing to put in the work. And if that means that he needs to accept a demotion to the minor leagues, he needs to accept the demotion and work on whatever he needs to work on. You know, there's also the side of it is that nothing is going to change anything. That Matt Harvey is never going to be the pitcher that he was. He will never be an effective pitcher ever again. And that's just the reality of the situation. And it sucks for him. But the Mets have made enough mistakes this year bringing in players that um, didn't pan out. This one is a an absolute red flag that I hope the Mets avoid. Um, and it doesn't change the way I feel about Matt Harvey. I still love him. And I still wish the best for him. Um, so I wanted to get that out there. That was for you, Joel, by the way. Uh, the, uh, the last thing I want to chat about is the rest of this week. Uh, th- this week, the Mets return home. So they have an off day today. Return home to uh, kick off a series with the Padres, followed by a series with the Pirates. And um, the Mets have a chance to make up some ground, but again, I'm, I'm not going to get too overly optimistic about it. Uh, uh so that's uh, that's kind of good. There's no game tonight. I'm I'm beat from the weekend series. Um, Thursday night's game really took it out of me, and and I was I'm sort of like been behind ever since. Um, so I'm kind of glad there's an off day today. It's it's kind of sad when I don't even play the games and I need an off day as a fan. You know, um, I don't know what that says about me, but uh, I do, and I'm glad that there is one tonight. Um, so the Mets will be back tomorrow, as I said, to uh, to uh, kick off a series with the Padres and see if the Mets can take advantage of uh, another sub-500 team. And hopefully the Mets don't help them become a former sub-500 team, which, by the way, they did for the Giants this past weekend. So, um, And then the Pirates come into town, MVP candidate Josh Bell. So it'll be a good, good couple of games, a couple of evenly matched teams for the most part. And um, just try to stay positive, try to stay optimistic, and try to get some wins. It's all we can do at this point. Just look for the bright side and silver lining on these things. Uh, that's what I'm going to try to do, at least. So uh, I will maybe be back tomorrow. I don't know for sure. I will definitely be back on Wednesday, though, to recap the kickoff of that Pir- uh, that Padres series. So until either tomorrow or Wednesday, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.